here we have the app, so we're at 850 RPM, 8 degrees, that's correct. We're starting to just see a little bit of vacuum applied. We're charging at about close to 14 volts. Welcome back to Love with a Classic. We're here with my daily driver, my 1975 XJ6. And today it's going to get a big upgrade. We're fitting a 123 emission system, a brand new distributor that's completely electronic, no moving parts inside, you know, besides just a turning rotor. And this one is a Tune Plus with Bluetooth. So there's a lot of neat tricks in it. So they have an older version where you need to put in a screwdriver and set, you know, different curves. You select them with a little micro switch and that works really well. However, this you can fully, fully tune with your smartphone and the app, and you can actually tune on the fly or tune on the dyno. So that would be really cool. You can also set the rev limits and you can actually set the mobilizer. So really neat things, but we're gonna fit it on here along with a new coil that I also got from them. And hopefully it's gonna improve the running of this engine because I think there's something wrong with my ignition system like we saw in the last video. And I want to try these for a long, long time. So let's have a look at the engine and I will show you guys what I'm going to remove first and like what I'm going to prepare. Then we'll install this and we'll go through the app and everything. And uh, when it's all done, we'll go for a test drive. So this is a 4.2 liter XK engine. And what I'm going to show you is applicable for all XK engines. Curves and things will be different, but really what I'll be setting up is applicable to pretty much any 4.2. So the distributor is down there and the coil is over there. That's one thing I want to do as well. I want to move the coil and put it over here where they have it on the series ones just because I think that's a heat source right there and coils don't like getting warm. And I just think it's going to sit better up here. So that's not something you have to do. That's something I'm going to do. Step one is to set the engine on TDC. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just going to use a wrench on there, turn it over until I see the marker over there and make sure that the rotor points at cylinder 6. The next K engine is timed on cylinder 6, not cylinder 1. Cylinder 1 is back there, cylinder 6 is up there. I will do that right now and then we'll prepare to pull out the old distributor and remove the old coil and have a look, put a new one in and do the wiring. I have the engine at top dead center now. So the rotor is pointing at where number six would be. This is number six. And on the other side, it's at top dead center. I verified that the marker is correct on this engine when I had it apart right out of the car. But if you see down there, right down there, you see that white marker right there? That is the zero. I wiped clean on there and it's made a new paint mark on there so it's very easy to see. One little tip, if you can't get a wrench on a crank pulley on any engine, it can be difficult sometimes, you can often get it on the alternator and then just use your thumb to press on the fan belt and you'll be able to turn the engine. So that's what I did right now and it's set to um, TDC there. I'm going to take that distributor out and everything else around it the old stuff, the module and all that, and then we'll get ready to put the one, two, three in. I have removed the ignition module. I've been running a series three ignition system, so I removed that, and I removed the coil, which is pretty much brand new. I could use this if I want to, but I got a one, two, three coil, and I'm gonna use that instead. The coil requirements is to have a good high performance coil, uh, no less than one ohm primary winding, otherwise, System doesn't seem to be that picky, but uh, they sent me over one of their original coils, so I will be using that. I'm just loosening the clamp here, the whole distributor in place. My plan is to keep sort of the, the rest of the clamp in there and just hopefully pull the distributor out with this in place. But we'll see if that works. It's completely loose now, so I think 
should, yeah, should pull out as well. Everything else is disconnected. Perfect. Here's the old tech, and here's the new tech, and this is actually quite modern for what's usual in this car. You should have your breaker, so this is 80s tech, but this is the future. Really looks fantastic. I love the little details, even the manufacturer date, 04 10 2022, right in there. That's impressive. Um, and it is made to look like a Bosch distributor. It's based on a Bosch distributor. I have a black cap on it, which is nice. I think it just looks more discreet. And now this is Lucas. Inside, we have a, uh, a Bosch style rotor and just electronics. So that's very, very cool. You can get replacements from them. So if you need an extra cap, an extra rotor, get that from them. No problem at all. So I'm just going to drop this into place. Like I said, it only really fits one way. We'll drop it in and then we have to look into the wiring because the way you set timing is statically at TDC. Just because this does everything for you. It does advanced retard, vacuum, everything. It does it electronically. So we're going to set this thing in there and have the engine at TDC. We'll set this at, at the, so it fires at cylinder 6. This little LED that lights up. I'll show you guys set that up clamp in place and then you're set to go wire it in and then the rest of it is all done in the app i put a little bit of oil just on the o-ring to help it slide in and i think it goes this way and the rotor pointing down at number six so let's try to see if it slides in We're halfway. It's a, it's a tight fit with the new O-ring, but that's really good. You don't want any leaks. There we go. And we'll remove that. Yep, see it's all the way in. Pull it up a bit and then I can spin that. Push it. There we go. That locks into place. And there we go. That clicks all the way at the bottom. Really, really happy with that. Now, time for some wiring. Here's the new coil and here is the old one. And this is the way it sat on the back of the block, basically on the special holder, which also had the ignition module. I'm going to put the new coil in the same place just because I'll have to redo the wiring if I move it. And I may do that at some point, but not right now. So it says negative there, positive there, negative there, positive there. So same way around the only thing i want to do is i want to switch the clamp around for me just so it will be easier when i have to put it back together so that coil is a little bit thicker like i said it doesn't have a brand on it, it just says one two three on it so it's ones that they've made uh, in-house and at least i'm happy with using that because then i know it is optimized for the ignition system let's see if it fits in here even yes it does You need a longer bolt actually. Found another holder for a coil. Came off this old thing I had laying around and that one fit better. So remove these, they were eight millimeters. And I'm gonna use some of the old hardware and I'm gonna use some new stuff as well. But you can use all old stuff if you don't wanna. I'm just gonna change part of my wiring because one of the connections on there was uh, a little frail when I started taking it apart. This one I'll move over. Let's see. I'll put a washer there. Put that on there. Like that. There we go. The other side I'm actually going to keep like this and uh, use those uh, eyelet connectors and crimp on there instead. I think that will most likely work a little better. Oh, 
there we go. That's ready to go back onto the car. I have everything connected up now. I just want to show you guys sort of what I did. It comes with a lot of cables, so that's really good. I've kept it a little bit on the long side just because maybe um, if I'll put this in another car at some point or want to try it somewhere else, I'm just giving myself that opportunity. It comes with a really good little manual. And on the back here, we have a wiring diagram. So black goes to the negative of a coil, red goes to positive, and blue goes to chassis ground. So I chose to put my chassis ground down here. It's just basically connected to the engine. But you can put that really wherever you want. I just want everything down here out of the way. And then when it's all connected up, I'm going to loom this together so it looks nice and neat. You're supposed to connect everything besides the black cable because now it's time to set up the distributor. And in the manual, you talk about it all really simply. If your rotor arm goes clockwise, that's what you do. If your rotor arm rotates counterclockwise, in our case, rotate the unit clockwise until the green LED just lights up. Press the rotor in a clockwise direction to remove any backlash in the drive. The LED shines through one of the holes and then you know you tighten it down and you know that you're set right now. Then you can connect everything up and go from there. So I'm going to connect the battery back up. We are going to turn the ignition on. Rotate this until we get that signal, the LED light, and then tighten everything down. I just turned the ignition on. You can actually see a blue little light right there. So we're going to rotate this clockwise until we see a green LED. There we go. That just lit up. Hopefully you can see that right behind in there. I'm going to remove the rotor so you can see that a little bit easier. See that green LED right there? So now I'm going to just rotate it back. Oh, this is in the way. And there, it just came on there. So that is the timing set. I tighten down the clamp now and I turn on the light to show you guys. Remember the thing where you have to remove the uh, rotor counterclockwise? That's all the way counterclockwise because there's always some play in anything, you know, the little rotor or, you know, in the drive gear down into the engine. So if I do this clockwise, see? So I just have it perfectly there. Very, very happy with those results. I'm going to turn off the ignition now and then we can get the cap on there, get the HT leads on, and then we're ready to download the app. Now comes the uh, fun bit with the app and all the math. It's a little bit complicated, but look at you guys, I've done all the math and we'll get to see if it's correct. For many cars, you have these sort of graphs here that they show in the manual. And these seem to be the sort of standard Bosch graphs. However, I haven't found one for this engine. But I have found the information I need. I just needed to convert everything to the correct um, numbers. So we're going to start with the distributor advance, and then I have the vacuum advance on another page. And the reason it's like this is just to show you how I've done the math. And it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. So you got distributor RPMs and distributor degrees. So a distributor turns half the speed of the crank. So you're going to double these to get the crank RPMs and this distributor works on crank RPM and it works on crank degrees so you need to double the degrees as well. So at 1050 RPMs you have one degree below that it was zero. 1300 you have six degrees, 1600 12 degrees, 2515 degrees, 3619 degrees. And that's fine if you set your distributor at, this is supposed to be 8 degrees before top dead center. So that's fine if you set your distributor. But on this occasion, we're setting the distributor at top dead center, and then we're adding the initial 8 degrees in our tune. So I add an extra point, 700 RPMs, 8 degrees. So it's 700, 750 RPMs, but I've added that, 8 degrees. A 1,000 RPMs, I just kind of rounded there, 9 degrees. 13, 14, 
16, 20, 2,523, 3,627. So I just added eight degrees to that. So this will be my map for, for that. So I'll get 27 degrees and this is just basically stock. So it should be nice and safe. And now to on to the next thing. This is for the vacuum part of this vacuum advance. Uh, for this compression on this engine, which is the eight to one. So at 20 inches of mercury, we have eight degrees, nine with four, seven, 1.5, 4.5 is zero. Because it said anything 4.5 and below was zero. However, this doesn't work in inches of mercury, it works in kilopascal. One inch of mercury is 3.386 kilopascals. So convert to that, and I convert it to crank degrees also. So dizzy degrees to crank degrees, doubling it. However, this works on absolute pressure. So I need to take away from 100. So 100 minus 68, 32, 100 minus 30. Yeah, you get it. So this is our map. And just as a fun, if you were to have maximum vacuum advance, which is 16 degrees, plus 27, we get 33 degrees of advance. And I think initially you get about 35. So this would be a safe map. Now I'm gonna connect up the battery, turn on the ignition, but not start the engine. And then we'll connect the app via Bluetooth. And I'll show you how to input this map into the app. The app is downloaded here. It's called 123 Tune and it connects right away. We have the distributor down there. I have connected this already once and all I did was go into settings and I tapped on the device and I got pin code and it's factory set to one, two, three, four. You can change that, you can mobilize the device, all of that, but you can go into curves. I just played with one curve just to like sort of see, I was just going through this last night. But if we're gonna go and edit a curve, uh, let's delete these points and just start from new. So it goes from 500 to 8,000 RPMs. I want to set my max RPM at 5,500. I'm good with that. And let's see. So technically they want zero RPM, zero degrees at 500 RPMs. Then we'll add a point at 700. We want eight degrees. So that's our idle at 1,000. We want nine degrees at 1300. We want 14 degrees at 1600. We want 20 degrees at 2000, okay, 2500. We want 23 degrees and at 3,600, which is the maximum advance, we want 27 degrees. We'll click done. And now we see our little nice curve there. And the one thing we'll do is you want that to continue up to the max RPM 27,000, even though we're never gonna go there. But that just makes sure it's nice and smooth in the upper RPMs until 5,500 RPMs. It um, it rev limits by ignoring, I think, 60% or ignoring 40%, something along those lines of spark, and it just sort of rev limits there. Let us add this one, and we'll remove these. So we'll add a point. So you see, it's a little bit fiddly um, if you can't get all of this information. So at 32, we want 16 degrees. At 70, we want 8 degrees. At 77, we want 3 degrees. And at 85, we'll go to zero. So we should get um, where this starts. I'm going to set the start set at 
an idol, I think. So an idol is, I will start at 500 and we'll see how that goes. But we got a little graph there. Now I am going to save this file. I'm going to call this xj6series2. Save. And we're going to write it to the strip there. And now it's in there. And now we should be ready to fire this thing up. And here we can see the advance. We'll see uh, the vacuum. We'll see the RPMs. If you're driving, you'll see the speed GPS there. Temperature of the distributor, volts, and amps. Let's fire it up. Should be all ready to go. And hopefully it fires up nicely. And I can have a look at the app as well and show you guys that in a little bit. the app so we're at 850 rpm eight degrees that's correct we're starting to just see a little bit of vacuum apply we're charging about close to 14 volts and uh that seems good so i'm gonna let this thing warm up for a little bit and uh, we'll see how it responds it's been sitting out here for about 10 minutes the aed is just turned off so we have 700 rpm between 700 and 750 rpms eight or nine degrees for the demand. So that is uh, pretty much stock. Still charging well and you can see how everything moves. So that would be very interesting to see how the phone starts in the mount. So I can see a little bit when I'm touch driving. But pretty very successful, very easy startup once it's all set up. And the nice thing about it now is I can infinitely adjust this without ever really having to touch that. It's just set in a good position. The one thing I am, of course, going to do is I'm just going to double check with the timing light to make sure that it corresponds to what I set to, but it feels pretty much exactly, um, I guess the timing is set as it was before, so I think we are good there. And I mean, it's just been sitting here idling. Not missing a beat. Just idling, of course, it does want to go for a run. XK engines or whatever really love just sitting and idling. They always get a little bit lumpy, and then if you run them out, they come back and they're a little bit happier again. So everything needs to warm up. It's quite cold today. Carbs and everything are still ice cold. Well, back from a test drive. You guys didn't come along for two reasons. I really just wanted to uh, get a feel for it and be able to concentrate, and I had my phone set up in a little holder and I can have a look at it so that was very interesting and it got dark it's that time of year it gets really dark but don't worry we'll do a drive video in a week or so when I've gotten used to everything I'll bring you guys along and let you know if I update everything I've already changed one thing in the map uh, but we'll do all that in the next video so uh, make sure you're subscribed and have the bell notification hit so that you will get notified when the next video comes up but really really great stuff uh the other thing i noticed i've reviewed some of the footage and um, i tried a new microphone for this video i don't like it it has a lot of background noise and um it, the engine just sounds terrible on mic so uh, not happy with that at all but at least i tried it and i'm not going to refilm all of this and bring the distributor out again things happen you try new things didn't work we're back to the regular mic again but yeah great product really good customer service whenever I have some questions i just contact them got really good service so um really recommend it i've linked their shop down below so you can have a look at the product as they have for basically any classic uh lots of cool distributors sadly not for any v12s but for um four cylinders two cylinders um six cylinders eight cylinders they have a lot of different distributors but uh, really, really good stuff. If you want one with less functionality, but just really does the basic and just works, because I mean, this is kind of over your top tinkering, but it's very fun. 
Uh, you can get the regular one, it's a lot easier to set up. You just set a curve and you're good to go. But we'll do a long-term test with this thing. We'll keep it in the car at least for a year and the daily driver will do a lot of miles with it. And I'll let you guys know how it goes. Um, so this will be a good test year round, all sort of temperatures, really cold and hot in the summer. And I think it will be a really good test. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam. This was Love of the Classic. I'll see you soon.